least he knows how to spell. <laughs> what? I was like, you think I can get some bitches with this? Okay, uh, no, 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 negative, no. <laughs> um, I am. I, I, Oh god, that just brought like, back- that's, that, that's when you're I in the- I told you the little girl you're... one is the creepy one. Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 along with my cohorts Lyson Fang and Krieger Margin. Yo, Kr Krieger's- Yo, uh, pretty much terrified. the same time. Just <laughs> too terrified. This is our very first uh, movie review that we've done in 2023, and my god, I don't know how to explain how we- kicked off this year of movie reviews we have reviewed the greatly requested film within the last six months if you guys have listened to our podcast and everything of terrifier 2 oh boy for those who don't know the uh, synopsis of this film is after being resurrected by a sinister entity, Art the Clown returns to Miles County to terrorize a teenage girl and her younger brother on Halloween night. Critics rate this film, and these ratings here are on the Rotten Tomatoes site as of four months ago. The For some reason, the page for the ratings for Terrifier 2 as of today is down. I just get a 404 page. Critics rate this film a 8.7% out of 10 and audiences rate this film an 8.5 out of 10. The budget of this film was $250,000 and they boxed off his back a fucking whopping $14.8 million on this fucking movie. Before we get into any further, if you guys happen to enjoy this review at all, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Join the madness that is Mike Check Productions. We have social media through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Discord, all under the same name. Like I said earlier in the video, we also have a podcast called the Mike Checked Podcast, where you can hear us talk about pretty much anything that comes to mind and listen to Krieger demand and request and beg to watch this film up to this point. <laughs> it was the running joke for the podcast until we finally got to it. Um, so, before we get into the pros and cons, uh, I guess we can kind of share some of our traumatic or entertaining memories of the first film, because I know me and Krieger have some very interesting, uh, memories of this film. It's honestly been so long since I've seen the first one, I don't remember much. Yeah, um, I can pull out one memory that I, re I remember of this, of the first film for me and Krieger. Uh, we were watching it at the apartments in uh, Pittsburgh, and it was the very first time we ever watched it. And we got to about halfway through the movie of the first film when um, you got like a phone call or something from your mom about like your grandmother or something being like sent to the hospital or whatever. And it was like a pretty big deal and everything. So like you kind of like panicked, paused the movie, and then left to go buy groceries. I think that's when my great-grandma died. Yeah, because you like specifically paused the movie, <laughs> looked at me, and said, let's get out of the house for a minute. And I was like, okay. And we just ended up buying groceries yeah. for like an hour and then finished the film like <laughs> an hour and a half later. And then after that, I thought this would be the last time we watched this film. But nope, we ended up watching Terrifier 1 another whopping three more times. Even last reviewing it on October Horror Fest as of last year. And we had both said that we actually did enjoy the movie. We were at, we were at the point to where that the graphicness and the gore of the film didn't really bother us that much anymore. But it was kind of one of those films where we watched it too many times that we were just tired of watching it. Like, it's a good movie, but when you watch a film one too many times in a very close, like, time span, it, it, you kind of get bored of it, I guess. I, that's the best way for me to explain it. But we both agreed that we don't want to watch this film again. <laughs> and, so we're watching it next week. No. Now, moving on to Terrifier you 2. You got a new sleep paralysis demon, I know that much. Yeah, I did. To me, it's not a perfect film. And I know I'm going to get some trolly answers from saying that but to me this is definitely not a perfect film but i am going to say that i for storytelling wise i don't regret watching this film because there was some kind of story in there that at least kept me watching it 
the the gore was just kind of like random splats of like what the fucks <laughs> So these are just some general notes, and I'll just kind of try and go over an overview. And I actually do have my, my good old – I won't do a trivia thing because we kind of covered the few trivia things I wanted to talk. Well, actually, I, I will do that too. But anyways, um, so uh, a couple – just a couple things about the film. Um, the chick who who is the quote-unquote finer girl, she did most of her own stunts throughout that whole thing. And she was trained in like martial arts and stuff to help it look a little bit more convincing, so that's pretty cool. A method acting, cool. Um there was a couple errors that they had that I don't – two of them, actually, I wanted to point out specifically. Um, I want to see if you guys caught that or not. Okay. So this one might be a funny one if you ever go back and watch this. During the dead possum scene at the school when they find the thing in the trash can, yeah. the right. kid with the beanie, uh, his bangs kept getting tucked in and out of his beanie every time it cut back to him. Yeah, that's something I that I – I not catch that. That's something that I wouldn't notice in, or anything. Like, that's yep. a very small money. It's not have. like the changing of the outfits in Mama <laughs> I was about to right. say, that's, that's what her reminded me of. <laughs> We're never going to live that movie um, down. And then the other thing, which I can't believe I didn't realize this. Um, so whenever Art threw the, the acid onto the chick, mm -hmm. um, do you guys remember what kind of container that was in? Uh, it was like a mason jar kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a clear glass bottle. Uh, yeah. That's a super acid that's capable of dissolving that. So right. You, you, they wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to be in that. You're, so, you're not supposed I, to be smart enough to know that. No. Well, that was a couple of couple what, little errors. What fucking scientist sat down to watch this movie? I felt like the dream scene was really dragging on. Like, it didn't even matter, and they were still keeping it around. I really didn't like that. I enjoy when horror movies have homages to the big three, like we were talking about through the film. I felt like it takes away when you do it too much. Like, one thing here, one thing here. It's like they tried to hit every single one, oh. and this isn't, like, art establishing himself. This is art doing all of the other things that all of the other big three do. Well, I was going to say, at the same time, some of, like, the callbacks that we saw in the film could have been just us mm -hmm. pulling strings out of, out of a... Of a fucking cup. There's no way. Because, because like, there's I mean, no way. not all of them, but I'm sure there's some that's just so stereotypical of, like, horror movies in general. Like, it's been done just, so it, many oh, yeah, times. This is mostly in this movie, so it's a reference to that. Yeah, but it could have been and done some in, of them, in something else. It, yeah, and some of them could have been stretching. Like, the salt thing with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's like, oh, he used salt, so that means his reference to the Texas and Chainsaw him, Massacre, so I could see how that... I would say him, like, biting and eating, and biting the heart and everything. Like, yeah, we did a, we did say that's kind of a callback to Jason Goes to Hell, but I also kind of feel like that, that also could have been done in plenty of other movies. It's just that with how our memories are, the last film we watched that something like that happened was Jason Goes to Hell. There's two s small details that I really didn't like. The slap that she did was not convincing at all. Oh, that God. clearly looked like she barely hit her. I could fake better yeah. than that. Also, whenever she went to go put out the fire, there was no, um, there, she didn't pull the pin for the fire singer so there's no way that would have worked. Yeah. Um, so I, didn't, I actually didn't catch that, but detail. I didn't catch that, but like, that like makes yeah, sense. She, you have to pull, it's pull like the pin one also of them things fire. that you, most people would just kind of ignore. Or yeah. a lot of people probably wouldn't even know. But, I mean, yeah. yeah. And the and INDB in their error list didn't even list that as an error. Something I did like was the, the fucking sunglasses in the costume shop. Like, he was like, yeah. <laughs> he reminds me of the old man from that one meme where he's at a gas station. There's the oversized glasses. And he's like, hey, you think I can get bitches with these? <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of also like... Making a reference to the first film where he's sitting there at the um, pizza shop across the table from the girls, and he's like sitting there trying to get their attention and everything. So I mean, it's mm, showing yeah. him that he still does that kind of stuff. PTSD from the cereal boxes. I thought that was kind of dumb. Oh, and the mom, the mom, the way she talked to her kids in general was a little unrealistic, and that seemed more like an older so sister raising the kids yeah. than a mom would be. She wasn't very loving. The mom um, was kind of uh, happy that she got her face blown off. Her only redeeming quality is whenever they had that conversation, she was like, I love you. And then she was like, oh, shit, I'm yelling at you too much. I love you, too. Yeah. It's like, it's like that the was the only human moment. The, that se whole the thing. second I saw that, that scene play out, I was like, she's going to die in, like, the next three minutes. <laughs> the first 
Terrifier, I felt was great with the equivalent, the the scene for it, the equivalence of gore to not. Um, I know they said they were trying to go like old school, like like grasher horror and everything. I know that's what they're going for, but I felt like a lot of it was just not good. Um, the way they did it, and I felt like it was too over the top, even for an over the top one. Like it, even though they they did add story into it, but I just I got turned off. So there's a there's some scenes that I was like, wow, that's fucking great. Like the crotch scene, like that had a big reaction because that's one of the things that nobody wants to see, and they fucking did it. But that's also um, that's also kind of a loose end because like I mean it like yeah you would assume that alive. you would assume yeah. that guy's dead, but like you just lost we saw him he's just writhing in pain holding what's left of his penis <laughs> presumably he's presumably he bled out but, you know mm-hmm. I, i'll get to that part here in a second um, yeah. i love the kids candy bowl thing that was like holy shit oh, are no. they allowed to do yeah. that that had a reaction <laughs> too um before my last point um i do want to have the quote of the movie for me uh the quote of the movie for me was i have to go pp do you want to hold it <laughs> uh, <laughs> My God, I love being the. I just want to be in that room with the writers. They're like, okay, what's this guy gonna say? Something smart ass. My biggest problem with this film is plot holes galore. I'm pretty sure if we deep oh, dived into this God. story, we could probably find like 20, 20 plus plot holes that are in this. Fuck, I like, don't want to get into that. <laughs> like, I, I don't want to do a whole deep dive into it, but I'm telling you, there's there's too many to hit that. Um, so I, I have my my rating, but I will I will wait until we give our ratings at the end for that but that's yeah. pretty much how i feel about the film mm-hmm. i do not and to answer this question since it is a sequel film we should answer if we think it is better or worse than the first one i think it tells a better story even though the story still fucking st- doesn't make sense yeah but at least they tried to do some storytelling in this one like actual um, character building actual lore that was put in even though i'll, I'll get into the lore in my it part it did make sense it did make sense um, uh, but they at least tried, so I like the story better in this than the first one, but I feel like the first one overall was a better film. I mean, like I said, it's been a while since I've seen the long one, first one, so I don't remember too much of it, but I comment this movie knowing it's coming out as, like, a grungy, grindhouse, old-school horror movie that's gonna be cringy, so I kind of loved all the gore and cringiness because i expected it i do agree with the like dream sequence of the clown cafe serial thing and all that Mm -hmm. that did go on way probably way too long as well as the kind of superhero-y sword gimmick thing at the end was he man, kinda, he man, yeah, Harry kinda, Potter, you know, Naruto <laughs> more shit. Gray Skull. Yeah, that one <laughs> I can agree with is kind of a eh part. Overall, I think the movie's fucking awesome. Their little girl clown, creepy. Oh, is great. Yeah, that was great. And stuff like that's probably my one of my favorite parts of the whole movie is the little girl part. Yeah. And stuff. Some terrible acting, but like I said, I feel that's comes with the style of movie would you would you say Stuff. that this film is an improvement or a downgrade from the first one if you can recall the first one what i can recall i put them about the same level mm-hmm. honestly i can definitely I, this one yeah. does have more story i can agree but, with that yeah overall yeah i put about the same level my first pro is also a con so i'm go ahead and gonna get that knocked out some of the effects, because later on I changed it again. Um, the go- the gore in this film, I feel like, at least in the very beginning, was an ap- an improvement from the first one by like a little bit. Like they amped up yeah. the amped up the ante when it came to that. But at the same time, this is definitely not a film for those who are squeamish, who can't handle grindhouse horror, saw-like films, watching people getting brutally cut up and everything. So uh, this is for a very selective now known as torture porn. Yeah, this is a very a very this is for a very selective audience. Overall, I think like the gore and the kills were like if they wanted to up up the ante on it and make them more disturbing and make people just be fucked up by it, it's an improvement. I did enjoy it was very like 
not in there that much and it was kind of weird in some spots but i did enjoy the introduction to the synth wave stuff because i'm kind of a sucker when it comes to synth wave music it to me it did give like an 80s vibe to it i don't know why i wrote that as a pro but i guess for a low budget film i thought the dynamic of the family was okay the dynamic the family had actually made sense <laughs> for how i, I think up for a storyline it makes sense but at the same time you look at it and you're like man the mom's a bitch. The actor for Art the Clown and the fact that, like, just one movie in a short miniseries is so impressive and how, like, he became an icon after all this just surprised me how quickly his popularity had skyrocketed in a matter of, like, a couple years. And just the acting of the from the actor and the fact that he used to be a mime and everything is... It shows, like, all the way to the very end, like he does a fantastic job just being creepy as fuck <laughs> and like that's one of my favorite things about this character is that he maintains as a silent antagonist without having to wear like a mask over his face you see his facial expressions oh, you yeah. see him actually like his facial expressions are basically says what he needs to say his, without saying words. His movements, his hand gestures, the way his body moves are how he talks. And that's the mo yeah. that's the impressive part about the character. Soundtrack for the horror itself, not the synth wave, but like the soundtrack they put in, I thought that was really good. Like it, it helped kind of br bring up the tension and everything. As Krieger said earlier, there was a lot of similarities and callbacks to a lot of like the other horror films, specifically the big three, like Freddy, Michael, and Jason. I did enjoy some of the ones in the very beginning, like the dream sequence, I kind of enjoyed a little bit just because it, it made me feel like I was back watching a Nightmare on Elm Street film. And then there was a couple parts here and there that kind of remind me of a Michael Myers film and everything. So I kind of enjoyed those. And then there was the couple of the Jason ones at the end. But yes it did kind of feel like they went a little over the top on that and it almost kind of overshadowed the entire movie itself the makeup effects on victoria that is the disfigured woman actually looked a lot better and more grotesque and more like disfigured in this film than it did in the last one because the last one they lo it looked like they shot that scene last minute and they just slapped play-doh on her face the over-the-top goofiness of art's performance reminded me of mainly deadpool because it the, the corniness of the deadpool and all the other jokes we made about one of our former colleagues of the channel and everything this is a pro as much as this actually was the ptsd trigger fear of the entire film for me was the little girl like if they wanted to make her creepy as fuck Lyson was right. The picture. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put the picture in the video because he sent me the picture. I can get it, but like, just like the picture of that picture is for future uses. The the little girl is just good god. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I found out later that the contacts the girl is wearing look very similar to the contacts they use for the zombies in Twenty Eight Days Later, but it's just something about her just triggered a fear that I never had since I was twelve, which was a a pro I wrote down later on. That's actually the last pro I wrote, but like, it's just, I don't know what it was. I don't know what about her caused it. It just, I almost just couldn't watch with her on screen and she barely did anything in the movie. <laughs> it's weird how the mind like makes you creeped out about certain things and everything. And there's been a lot of creepy ass little girls in horror movies in the past, but something about her was on a different level. Uh, the trend of him attacking the eye first, he did stop doing that later on. Like, he, he stopped doing it after he, you know, stabbed the guy in the dick. But how the trend started with them attacking the his victims on the eye first were actually, I liked it. Because, like, it tied in with how he had lost his eye at the end of the first film and was trying to put a new eye in. So it kind of felt like that he was still trying to find that replacement eye as in, like, a reaction or like a habit that he did from when he did it like in the beginning of the film so i liked that a lot this is tying into what you guys said about the dream sequence um how you guys said that the dream sequence did run a little bit longer than it feel like it should have been i kind of feel like i want to extend that to the in kind of the entirety of the movie because like 
I feel like you... I feel like you can trim out at least 25 minutes of this film and not really miss much about it. Like, you can get all the important creepy details and all the kills and everything and all the important lore in there still, but you can cut out probably at least 25 minutes of this movie and still have the movie we watched right now, just with less bullshit in there. But I just kind of feel like that they took too long to tell a story in this film. Acting was a bit over the top. The uh, mom's the bitch. We said that across the board. The mother's slap, I rated it a double F minus. Kind of going back into some of the gore and the makeup effects and everything. When he was attacking the Halloween shop uh, cashier dude, I felt like this scene in particular I kind of had some issues with. Like, it felt like the blood effects were a bit more on the tomato soupy side than what blood makeup supposed to look like again low budget i know but did it did that seem a bit more soupy like to you guys or is that just me over criticizing there was it? definitely some points where like the quality of the blood or even the like bodies were lesser than other parts like when but... the yeah. When the front, the so it might have to do with production though too, because they were almost done filming pre-pandemic, and the pandemic hit, and then they had to finish it up. Yeah, that yeah. could be it. Maybe they weren't be able, weren't able to get the higher quality shit. Well, like so. they, the film didn't come out until last year, so the, so the the production probably got halted, and then when it got continued, then they were like, okay, like we need to get this film done now. So that's. That's probably yeah, what's happened. Because a lot yeah. of because a, a lot of movies got halted for about a year because of that. Another makeup effect that I kind of wanted to point out I didn't like was when the the girl's uh, friend got hit with the acid on the face. Did any of you notice how computerized and how bad the bubbly skin effect looked on that girl's face? Oh, and then oh, the bubbling and stuff. Yeah, and that, yeah like that was what I was everything saying. Everything about the, was bad. Some of the effects and stuff, and that, especially in the later parts, it seems was definitely I wasn't, lower bar. I wasn't cringing at the fact about how disgusting it looked, and I was cringing about the fact of how bad it looked. <laughs> <laughs> Besides the main characters of the film, all the other characters kind of just were like bitches or douchebags, like. Yeah. Kind of like... Either just there or... Yeah. Oh, the part where they gave the exposition about what happened to the dad and a small side conversation between two unimportant characters, that pissed me the fuck off. Like, when the, when a film, like, teases about a character that happened to, like, a parent or something, like, off screen, and they just tease at it and don't really tell them what happened, I want to know, I like, mean, what happened to that so character... How would like, how would you have rather it have done? Cause, like, I, I, I feel like, like... I get why you're angry about it and annoyed by it, but I honestly don't really see much other way of really... I, I feel like it, they could have... it's just, like, the kids talking about it. I feel like they could have tied it into the dream sequence somehow. Like, oh, yeah, they like not, not like in some grandest, like, over-the-top fireworks and everything but like do it kind of like yeah. how Freddy how Freddy did it in his movies just show it put a fucking bullet to the point and there like actually sh yeah. like make it more like okay oh shit this is actually what happened don't just dump it in a useless conversation that people will probably miss if they went to the fucking bathroom or not paying attention because someone's probably getting a goddamn hand job in the middle of the goddamn theater jesus christ <laughs> If there's any movie somebody's getting a hand job to, it's not this one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's as as much bad as metaphor, but movie, still, it is, it is not. If you're getting a hand job during that movie, you you got some major issues. It's a bad metaphor, it's not a but deep movie. I'm I'm making a point by not using a good example, but a point's well, a you point. You weren't an English major, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's why I stuck with digital media. I put minor issues, but I think it's kind of leaning more towards major issues with trying to explain or present, like, how the lore, the story about, like, how um, art came back to life and how this demon girl is tied in with them and how the kids and the dad were tied tied to the art thing, and the art um, ca character, and then 
randomly tying in Victoria at the end, like first making it seem like she wanted to kill him, and then all of a sudden she's like, "Oh, I love yeah. him. Here's here's his head as my child." It's like Baby, she, she did kind of lose her mind though. Yeah, but like I the the lore look the lore was as sloppy as the fucking gore in this movie. Like it, it's Man, like I can agree with that. I figure I'm more hoping that if they make a third one, maybe they'll expand and go more in depth into that. And that that's kind of why and I And the whole dad thing doesn't make sense on who the dad was. No, or yeah, like why that sword can like I yeah. was hoping there was going to be a really good connection there, but That's just, that's why I kept maybe wasn't. Maybe that like was cheap supposed cop out. to be. Maybe there was supposed to be, but like talking about the getting having the pandemic issues, maybe and they had to cut stuff. And yeah, I was gonna say, who knows? Maybe they didn't there's have time to do all that. Maybe so. Yeah, who knows? They didn't have time to have a proper story. I mean, <laughs> maybe they had to cut stuff out and they didn't couldn't get the people back to record or something. There's multiple reasons they could have done it. That's why yeah. I say maybe if they make a third, they can go more in depth and kind of maybe explain some of that yeah and i was also gonna add like i i really don't i i hate it when i have to review films that are like this like they focus more on the disgustingness the gore the kills and horror films and everything because my brain is always like a complete movie yeah like my brain is always trying to look for like okay like there's all this other stuff in here like there's kills there's gore there's disgustingness there's grotesqueness stuff and everything but like i'm also trying to find like is there actually a story they're trying to tell is there actual lore in here and there was a story they're trying to tell there was lore in there but either by just because this is what they plan to do and just make it fucking confusing or just production issues because like it it just felt like a jigsaw puzzle with 10 pieces missing and you don't have the full thing in front of you and like i'm not saying this film is bad like i did enjoy this film as as fucked up as me saying that is like for what the film is like when it comes to grotesqueness and disgustingness and gore it's good it matches the same level as the first one but when it comes to storytelling it doesn't know it does not get a passing grade for me on that one that is i guess our kind of individual thoughts now i guess we can come back together with what we've all explained if there's anything we want to add into before before we get into like our final like reviews and, and whatnot anything we wanted to bounce back and forth uh, you, whenever you guys are I'm, I'm good like i feel like we've kind of covered it good yeah, I, think, yeah. I, I was gonna say like i probably went in more depth when it came to this kind of this movie in general i do that a lot when it comes to movies i'm just so i love getting good, into I... depth but when it no. when it makes sense and they just didn't they just didn't have much of a story here to, yeah it just doesn't make sense yeah and it's like it's meant to enjoy the the horror on it but like i like fleshed out stories for an overall last minute thought final ratings what would you guys rate this i'm gonna give two different ratings like one based on just overall like horror movies and one for that style for the style of movie for the grindy kind of paying tributes and gory style movies like those i would put it as probably i'd say an eight now if you're going for overall like horror just generic overall just a horror movie overall like bring all the classic horror movies the three major ones all of them Basically. that would probably be more along the lines of a five and a half or a six basically the movie itself as the presentation as the gift that's left at your doorstep <laughs> as a movie yeah. like if you if you're watching it thinking oh this is gonna be a normal like good old like horror movie like a slasher if anyone film is going to this then, film thinking it's going yeah. to be a normal average slasher film they are dead fucking wrong <laughs> and they're yeah they're stupid but yeah if you're trying to put it in that category of a normal like horror movie yeah it's probably gonna be a five point five or maybe a six but if you bring it into like the actual horror like grind grungy shit yeah i would say an eight 
it's definitely on the better end of those subs. Okay, so for the original numbers you gave me, that brings yeah. your overall rating like together a 6.75. I would say that'd be fair. Yeah. Krieger? So, for the style of the film, and my, my review is going to be a little bit lower here. Yeah. Um, for the style of film, for what they're going for, I think they did very well. So it's on the upper end, like a seven. For the film itself, on how I grade films, um, I can't rate this one high remotely just because it's not even a fully fleshed out story. Mm -mm. It just felt like uh, gore porn. It felt like a... Uh, and as much as... Like a torture porn filler sequel movie. Like basically what it is i wanted a conclusion to the story yeah i don't feel like this is something that should be a trilogy kind of story i feel like it should have ended here and it wasn't a conclusion story um for it but uh i'm giving this one a three out of ten that puts it at you marked it pretty much five out of ten so you are kind of sitting in the middle with this film this film kind of feel like it needed a conclusion i kind of hope they don't try to do the same thing like they did with like the Jason and the Freddy and the Michael films back in the 80s. Comparing it to the original, they did up the ante a lot. I would say, um, I would have to go with like a seven and a half for the style of the film because, like, it, it kept with the grindhouse horror, the torture porn, the saw like over the top bloody bullshit. So they did good on that. When it comes to the movie itself, again, it could have been just with the direction they were going. It could have been production issues while while filming it. It has a lot of loose ends. It has a lot of plot holes. It has a lot of stuff that doesn't make any sense that is like, oh, come back and watch the sequel. You don't want to do that because that's going to deter a lot of your audiences away. So that for that, I'm going to have to put it at like a 2.7 because like, I wanted more depth in the lore. I wanted more, yeah. more of it, but it just it didn't give enough. Like when you're doing a sequel, you want to give a little bit of lore to keep, draw viewers in, give them enough depth in it to have them come back for the sequel. They tried to. It's like they tried to do that, but they just didn't give enough. So for yeah. me, uh, that puts the film at a five point one. So. To combine all three scores as a flat rating between the three of us. For my kind of rating scale, that's kind of a rough start for the first movie review of the year, but for the kind of movie it is, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not going to be everybody's cup of tea, so to speak. Oh no, like... Either if you're going in for a story, or if you just can't like, handle gore. Like it's, like, it's one of those I kind of enjoy watching from occasionally, that style movie, so... I'm telling you right that's now... That's probably why I'm on the higher. I... I'm usually not a I big... enjoy that style of movie, but I will never rate that style of movie high, because I don't think it... I don't think it takes much talent or mm -mm. storytelling I mean, to fair. do something like that. No. That's a fair... Just thing too ignore just like a superhero movie I'm, I'm never gonna i'm never gonna rate a superhero movie 10 out of 10 just like i'm never gonna rate one of these 10 out of 10 i'll agree with you on like how you shouldn't rate a film in this style at a very high rating because of it doesn't take much ignoring the fact that i'm a fanboy of jason because i have other reasons why i like jason but like ignore right. well, that's a different subject ignoring that film i'm yeah, talking yeah. about gore porn stuff that has been our reactions, if you caught them in the beginning, and our review of Terrifier 2. Again, our very first review of 2023. And again, like, if you're a fanboy of this movie, we apologize. It's just, I feel like... Hey, I'm a fan we, of it, too. We, That's why I said I... But I had to do the separate styles. Yeah. Cause, I just yeah. say that I probably over-critiqued it a little bit, which, I mean, it happens when you've reviewed movies for fucking it's years. It's I like not a bad hold, thing to do. Yeah. I like to hold all honesty to a higher standard. I mean, if you look at my average review, I guarantee you it's not high. If you guys enjoyed this review, uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Join the madness that is Mike Check Productions on YouTube. Again, social media is across the board. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Discord. 
Also, we have a podcast on Spotify called the Mike Check Podcast. You can hear all of our random and funny stories and listen to Krieger beg us to watch this film up to this point. But until then... Yeah, what's the next movie he's going to beg for? Uh, probably Thanks Killing 3, knowing him. <laughs> yeah, well, that already kind of started. Killing 3! <laughs> We'll have to save that for when there's some turkey. Oh, God, I'll have a kid by then. <laughs> this is Mike Check 95 yeah. with Lice and Fang and Krieger Margin. Deuces. We are signing out.